and welcome to another Cliffs List webinar interview. Today, my special guest is Roosh, who is uh, quite a famous community, community uh, personality. And um, Roosh and I have gone back, I guess, quite a long time. We originally had contact on the very old Mysteries Lounge, which is defunct for, I don't know how many years at this point. Um, and uh, that was kind of a unique place where, you know, in order to be on the lounge, uh, you couldn't just join it. You had to be uh, recommended by someone as a top uh, pickup artist uh, or ladies man, uh, or else you know there there was it was a very closed and and uh, secretive membership. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, a lot of great material on that board got lost when the board sort of disintegrated. Um, but uh, in any event, uh, certainly I've made a lot of friends from that board and people I've stayed in touch with for many years. So we'll start with Roosh. Uh, Roosh. Why don't you tell people a little bit about yourself? Uh, you can tell them as much or as little as you'd like, and uh, I'm sure that they're going to be very interested to hear your story. Okay, sure. Uh, so I was born in 1979 in Washington, D.C., so that makes me 39 now. And I first stumbled onto game. Uh, like a lot of men, I was not getting any, any girls in high school or college. I was a late bloomer, too, so I didn't start going through puberty until I was around eight, 18. So I didn't have any confidence when I got into uh, college. I followed bad advice on how to meet girls by becoming their friend first, by being nice to them and buying them things. And I don't think I need to explain how that didn't get me anything. And then towards the end of college, I was around 21 years old and I stumbled on Tony's Lay Guide. And this was a free guide at the time. And when I found it, I was just absolutely amazed that you can walk up to a girl that you don't even know, start a conversation with her, and then she will decide at some point to give her number to you, to want to kiss you, to want to go to bed with you. So I just dived head, head first into this. And I really started when I was around 22. And this was after I graduated from college. I had the time after work and the disposable income to really pursue game. I did mostly night game. And at this time, I started a blog which started to share some of the things that I was doing in the Washington, D.C. area. And after that, I, I made friends with a man from South Carolina who was in Mysteries Lounge at that time. And I remember I got in when having a man bag was the hot trend. So you would have a man bag and inside you would have a notebook where you would draw things and you would use that as a prop when you would meet, meet girls. I think this was around 2004. And then this was around the time that Neil Strauss came in, in the board. So I really, uh, absorbed a lot of ideas in Mysteries Lounge at that time, along with other sites too. And I kind of adapted it to my own, uh, what I would say mostly introverted personality and also to use in the Washington DC area. And then uh, to make a long story short, after about uh, when I was around 27, I got kind of sick of the rat race in Washington, D.C. I mean, it's really about work and networking and, um, you know, trying to show off and things such as that. I quit. I lived in South America for one and a half years going and coming back. And then I moved to Europe in around 2011. And I've been in Europe for the past seven years, adapting a lot of game tactics for use on uh, more traditional girls as from the standpoint as you are a foreigner that is usually seen as higher value than say an average local guide. Uh, so I wrote a lot of books on, you know, things I've learned in Poland, Ukraine, and also in South America too. And that arrives at the present time where I'm currently in Eastern Europe and just, you know, trying to adapt not only in light of uh, smartphone technology and dating apps, but also the fact that I am getting older too. And, you know, when you get older, you have to learn additional things uh, in order to maintain the beauty that you have become accustomed to. Well, I, actually, I'd like to start right there then. Uh, tell me the differences you find between 
you know, uh, when you were younger and now that you're a little older, uh, what, what, adapt, what, what things you've adapted or what have you learned that maybe you would do differently now that you, than you didn't do before? Mm. The main thing of getting older is that your motivation and your energy in order to approach large quantities of women, it goes, it goes down. You are no longer able to go into a competitive environment like a nightclub with a lot of younger, horny guys and be able to match the volume of approaches that you need to do. Even though in your mind, uh, your game is better and your experience really helps you out on each approach that you do. I mean, just uh, you just get tired. You get tired after two approaches or three approaches. Now suddenly it's too loud. You don't want to yell in a girl's ear. Uh, you don't want to stay up late because you want to wake up at a reasonable hour. So for me, as getting older, night game has really come come down. And then there's always the option. Now, of course, uh, day game has become more important. A lot of men, they do that. Um, so it's about finding a niche that can match how your game and how your energy it, it is slowly changing and changing. But as far as what I would change um, in terms of what I could tell my younger self, I don't think I did anything wrong coming up. I mean, I really uh, did the work that I had to do to build the experience and knowledge in order to get pretty good at it. So there's nothing I would say. I mean, maybe I think in my early days, I would focus, I mean, in my very early days, because I wasn't confident in speaking, I would focus on approaching on the dance floor. But these were uh, some of the lowest ROI approaches. So, I mean, but I don't advise men to do dance approaches n now. But I think a lot of men, they're looking more for an easy fix. So a lot of men are getting into game online, uh, whether Tinder, Instagram, and so on. Um, but unfortunately, you know, as good as you can get on Tinder or Instagram today, it still wasn't, it's still not as good as if you were just a normal guy who could approach back in 2005. So really, if you're a younger guy, the name of the game is just to harness the youthful energy that you have to do the approaches and then as you get older, once that energy comes comes down to find a niche, uh, whether it's a certain city or neighborhood in your town or another country entirely, or to do day game entirely, uh, that will allow you to maintain the results that you want. Um, what, uh, what maybe as a result of experience uh, has made it more efficient, I guess, as you've gotten older? Like what... What's made the difference between, you know, when you're younger and having all that energy, but you're you're just not as successful because you're you're just you haven't got the experience. But now that you have more experience, what what are you doing now that you might be might be different from uh, then? And and I'm and I'm also interested in and in what you do differently now as a result of being older rather than you know just something that uh, you know you might have changed if you were younger if you knew it back then. When I was younger, I didn't have a screening process to screen out girls that in the end were just going to waste my time or not satisfy the needs, whether physical or emotional needs that I wanted. And when I was younger, it was mostly the physical. You know, it was mostly trying to make up for lost time. Hey, I didn't get laid in high school and college. Now I have to sleep with a lot of girls. So I feel like a man. So mostly I wasted tons of effort and time into pursuing women who would flake on me, who would dis disrespect me in some way. So I think that comes when you overvalue them, when you really think this random girl that you meet, she may have a cute face, has the capability of somehow completing you, somehow adding to your life something that you can't get on your own. And then as I get older, because of the experience of meeting a lot of girls, I can tell in a short amount of time if this girl is worth the pursuit or not. A lot of it now is excluding girls, is, okay, I go up to her, we talk for a couple of minutes. And based on that judgment, which I um, cross set with all the data I have in the past from the approaches I've done, I can make a really accurate judgment on, is this girl worth pursuing? Is the way she's acting towards me, whether her body 
language and so on. And it can come from various qualification questions that you uh, ask a girl with. Like one thing I would ask is about a girl's job. How committed is she? Uh, if she's working 12 hour days, that's not gonna leave a whole lot of energy for her to, I believe, satisfy me in the way that I, that I want. I also ask a girl about um, how many times a day she eats and what kind of food she eats to get a judgment. Does she cook for herself? Does she take care of herself? Does she treat her body in a healthy way? Because if she eats junk food all day, if she doesn't take her body and her health seriously, she's not going to attempt to take care of me. She's not going to cook for me or surprise me with a pleasant meal. So I look at these things now, and if even if I'm talking to a girl for half an hour or so, and it's going well, but she's just not showing that you know she has the values that I want, even though maybe her body is good. In the past, I will look at the body and think of sex and go full steam a head but now i would bow out you know and this would save a lot of time in uh more casual relationships that don't really go anywhere um so you're screening more i guess now that you're older you're finding that's like the major difference yeah so the major difference is knowing what these girls that i'm um meeting can and can't give me and to make a logical decision on if it's worth pursuing because i mean you have only a limited amount of energy and you i, I don't believe you should just give it to every every girl because this is really by you know this is also a subtle way that men overvalue girls that and they can feel it well he just you know he does this all the time he just wants to meet any any girl. But if you have a belief where you really want her to prove herself to you, it comes across to them in subconscious ways. And I believe this definitely helps because you you come across as a more as, as a higher value man that is really that she now in a subtle way has to prove herself to you. She has to jump through hoops for you instead of the other way around. Is there anything that you do, you know, I mean, women are said to be more attracted to older men. Um, and other than, um, you know, uh, is there anything that you do that re relates specifically to, to having gotten older as far as uh, women? I mean, yeah, what, there is a stereotype that women like mature men, established men who have their own apartment and so on. But at 39, I'm still attracted to the same age range that I've always been, which is between 20 to 25. And to pull a 15 to 20 year age gap, uh, you know, I've definitely done it, but it's not, but a lot of girls, especially in the West, I mean, even a five year age gap for them can be seen as large. And there's a lot of things that in the media where they try to shame men for uh, dating a much younger girl, which doesn't help either. So for me, I don't the um, like the the tactical thing I don't do. I don't ask girls how old they are anymore, because if I ask them how old they are, they're going to ask me and I don't want any obstruction before we get intimate because i find that before you have sex with a girl the for her the age gap is so important and she can't imagine being with a man 15 20 years older but after sex happens suddenly she doesn't care so i learned that you just have to not share your age just don't tell her just say i don't uh want to share it you know i don't want to you know where i come from it's not nice to ask a man how old he is, even if you're from the same town. And I just don't share it. And after sex happens, then I can tell her. And it's not going to be a deal breaker. So I withhold damaging information before sex happens when it's related to that. I would say that's the number one thing I, I do now while I am older. The second thing is I don't talk as much. When I was younger, I felt like I had to prove myself to constantly be interesting. Now I find that silence for me gets to me as far as talking nonstop like a clown when I was younger. Um, what I find, I just 
look at them. I stare at them, make them blush a bit and let her do the work in asking me things. Let her do a little bit of effort. Let her feel a little uncomfortable that there is a silence instead of me constantly trying to fill the silence. Now, of course, in the first five to 30 minutes of a conversation before a girl is sure about you, she's not going to put, she's not going to fill a lot of the silences, but at least on dates, I definitely can calm down. Now, I, I used to go in on dates with a list of things I would talk about or word games, but now I don't go in with anything. And if there's nothing in my mind, if I have nothing to say, I don't say anything and let her do some of the work. Uh, what have you found is, uh, like I know that you've recently written a book on uh, day game. What do you find um, works really well from that that maybe you uh, have learned from experience like uh, you know when you first go up to somebody when you have no experience you know you're sort of stumbling in the dark or you're maybe trying to execute something you read online or somewhere um, but after you've done it a while you you gain a certain experience what what have you learned from your experience that you know maybe somebody hasn't heard from heard before that uh, might be interesting to to give them some advice you know, what I have to share in that front is really old stuff. It is to approach girls during the day who are either moving very slowly, who look lost. These girls are, they have free time. They are bored. They are waiting for something to happen to them. The second thing is approach girls who give you eye contact, no matter how short, even if it's a second, half a second, or it's even better if they do both of those. If they're walking slow and they give you eye eye contact, uh, you, you don't have to do much. You can just approach her with, uh, excuse me, do I know you from somewhere? And that's going to go far. It's going to be the most natural thing ever. I find that a lot of guys, when they learn about game, they think it's a magic trick that can get any girl they want. And I think a lot of the internet marketers online, they kind of sell it too. Uh, you know, the, oh, never get rejected by any girl. But the reality is that game is a tool set and girls still want to be physically attractive to a man, whether his look, his style, his body language, and so on. So if you can get some of that attraction, I'm not saying she has to be in love with you based on how you look, but if you can get some of that attraction going before you actually talk to her, then your job is going to be so much easier. A lot of men, they're, they're doing 10 approaches a day on just any girl and running after them, whether they're walking fast or slow, whether they're using headphones or not, whether they're on their phone or not. But the ROI on that is going to be so low than if you just take a little bit more time, spend a little bit more time outside and approach the girls who are either giving you eye contact or walking slow. You'll do less approaches, but you'll get the same out of it and you'll be less burned out from just the constant need to hype yourself up after rejection and rejection. So um, when so now when you're doing day game, do you find that uh, that uh, you know that if they're not giving you that kind of I guess initial invi approach invitation, uh, that you you noticing a big difference in the results and um, and and even but then you know the the thing is usually it's not necessarily the ones that are are, are giving you the the signs are the ones that you want. So like do you typically just avoid those or you just only go after the ones that give you those signs or do you do you go anyway and and see what happens if there's a girl that i am really attracted to and she doesn't give me a sign i'll still go up to her because i'm not going to let the girl of my dreams just walk by because uh but my did the my experience shows that unless one of those two factors is in in play, she is not going to respond in a favorable way. And if the girls you're attracted to are not looking at you, you have to understand why. This is not due to game, but we have to get, I mean, especially in this modern age where girls have been trained to go for the hot guys when their number one favorite apps focus on the image. Listen, I don't want to delicately trim my beard and worry about every eyebrow hair. 
But listen, but they we're in this age where women care more about looks more than ever. They care less about how much you make, less about if you're a doctor, a lawyer. I mean, I'm not saying that you have to get plastic surgery, but you have to maximize your physical look as much as you reasonably can. Uh, experiment with different outfits, with different wa ways of walking. I mean, walk like a, a tough guy. Go ahead, try anything to get attention, anything to cause a girl's to break her attention from whether her smartphone, uh, the place she's going to, the fight she got into with her friend, to break her attention, to give it to you. The more she does that before you approach her, the less you have to approach. So I'm not saying don't approach a girl, but if, especially if you're new in this, it's not going to be fun if out of the first hundred girls you approach, you don't get anything out of it. It's going to make you think game doesn't work. It's fake. It's impossible. Only the hottest guys uh, get girls. No, but you have to have expectations that understand that girls have more choice than ever before through their phone they can go online and get a hundred matches of guys in a in a single day and we have to account for that this is why a lot of men they leave whether canada the uk or the usa because they can walk in their town looking great all day but the only girls that are going to really give them eye contact are ones who are maybe a five out of ten a six out of ten and we all want those eights and nines but um but the problem is those eights and nines they want a guy who is a 10 out of a 10. so unless we can somehow create a niche or create some kind of look that appeals to the targets that we want, you're gonna end up having to spam approach hundreds of, of, of girls to maybe get a seven out of 10. One of the big things that I, I keep hearing from the guys on my newsletter is, and it, you know, the old, they all have a, approach anxiety. Hmm. Um, and uh, it's been my experience that it never quite completely goes away. I think even Mysteries talked about that. Um, but uh, what do you, how do you coach guy, uh, guys who seem to have some problems, uh, you know, finally breaking that ice? The, the thing that I advise men is to get yourself in as horny a state as you possibly can. You are so, you are so horny that it actually starts to mute the anxiety because you don't care anymore. You just need a woman to be intimate with. And the number one thing I tell men is don't masturbate. Don't use any X-rated porno sites, no porn at all, no porn, no masturbation. Just get yourself in this a primal animalistic state where you need a girl because you have no outlet. Now, of course, if you're uh, backed up and in pain, you have to solve that. But a lot of guys every day, they're going on to these uh, video sites and masturbating. They're draining the number one motivator that can get them out there. You know, if there's no way for you to relieve the sexual urge at, at, at home and you are starting a game program where you have to approach a couple, couple girls every, every day, in my experience, this anxiety, it goes down. Now, like you said, it doesn't go away completely, especially the first approach of the day. That That is usually, even, even me, sometimes I kind of hesitate, oh, I should have done it then, and then I have to make a U-turn or something. Usually the first approach of the day is, is, uh, is the uh, hardest. But, uh, as, but the more uh, you know, excited you are to want to be with a girl, the less I believe that is a factor. Okay, I usually find that the uh, you know the first couple of minutes when you do an approach are, are critical, um, and you know sometimes you've got to maneuver that uh, encounter so that it it keeps going and keeps advancing. Um, are there any sort of things that you throw in there? Uh, I guess when you start up with a girl to to just sort of get to close enough that the conversation starts really uh, developing? Usually the first approach of the day for me doesn't go as well because I work from from home. So, so the first approach of the day is the first time I talked. So I really put low ex 
expectations on me. I don't say I have to get a number on the first, I, I have to talk for an X amount of time on whatever approaches I do. I reduce the burden of me to perform as much as I possibly can. I don't want to treat the game as a robotic thing where I have to do X, Y, and Z. So I kind of, in my mind, I approach a girl and I say to myself, is she someone who I can connect with? Is she going to be a cool girl who responds to me in a positive way? So I put more of the burden on her. In my mind, will she be interesting? Will she ask me interesting things, ask me questions? Will she sustain the conversation? Will she show some elegance and charm? So a lot of, so instead of internalizing this anxiety, either before you approach or during the conversation, put the expect, put the anxiety onto her. Put the expectation onto her. Now, of course, your expectations, if you're, say, overall a five out of a 10 guy and you're doing and you're approaching an eight out of a 10, she, she's not going to strain much. But if your expectations are normal, if you are, say, a five out of a 10 and you're approaching a five out of 10, then, hey, that putting the anxiety on her is much more likely to lead to conversations where you don't even have to worry if it's going to go well, you don't have to even think about how I can keep the conversation going. When you approach a girl, what's your usual goal? Are you, uh, uh, how, how does it progress from start to, uh, like, where does it, where does it end? Or is it all de dependent on that particular encounter? Like you're, are you trying to take her home right away? Or are you just trying to get her phone number? What, what's, what, what are you usually going for? Assuming time is not a factor where, where I have a meeting in an hour or I have to meet a friend somewhere, I'm on my way. I take that interaction as far as it can go as far. So I always, I mean, I try, I mean, this is, I would say half the time I try to get her from where we are meeting, whether on the street, in the mall and get her somewhere else in a nearby cafe I sell it as maybe a 10 minute cup of tea uh, to see, to get her investing in that first interaction as much as I possibly can. Because now while the correlation is not perfect, I do find the more a girl invests in you in the first meeting, the more likely she will come through on a second date. Um, of course, the exception is if you pop the sexual tension on the first um, meeting where you kind of just blabber about everything about you, all the interesting things, and you don't leave her curious to learn more about you. As long as you don't do, do that, I do find trying to continue the, the interaction as much as you can in a nighttime environment. This is pretty, this is pretty easy because you just stay at the club or the bar. You go from one side of the bar to the other Maybe you go outside in the patio, you come back, and then once you get bored in that place, say, hey, I know another venue down the street to get her away from her, her group. Uh, during, during the, or if you've been at that bar long enough, say that you know, you're, doing the, you're, you're doing the after party at your apartment, try to walk her there. Um, during the day, I, I like doing approaches towards the early evening around five to eight o'clock when girls are basically done with their day so that if the interaction is going well and I say, Hey, let's go grab a cup of tea. I know a cafe right over there. There's, she doesn't have a busy schedule in order to say, no, I can't. But if you approach girls in the early afternoon, like 12, one, two, chances are she still has a lot of things to do. I mean, ideally, if you can approach girls before, between the hours on the street of uh, six to nine, those are much more likely to go to a cafe, to a bar, and then actually keep on going until the late hours. Okay. Do you, what do you find is the biggest difference between the day game and night game? At night, um, I find that... If you don't get some intimacy that night, at least a kiss or you take her home, the chances that you're going to see her again from just getting a phone number are extremely low. At night, you have to go far. I mean, if you're not at the 
touching stage you're, or you're getting really close to kissing her, getting her number and then expecting her to show up for a date is extremely low. Uh, I don't, I'm, I'm at the, in some countries, if I don't sleep with a girl the same night I meet her, there's almost no point of getting her number unless there was an, uh, a situation where her friend cock blocked me or I had to go. I mean, if she had the option to continue the night with me and she said no in favor of hanging with her friends that she's known for years or to get a jumbo slice of pizza or gyro or whatever it is that girls like to eat, then the, I mean, why would she now block four hours of time to go out with you on a Tuesday night or a Wednesday? So if she says no to something small now, she's definitely not going to say a yes to a bigger ask that you do a couple days later when you text her. During the day, if she doesn't go out at night and is used to being approached by a lot of guys, you need way less investment on her part in order to get her out on a date. But unfortunately, this is starting from uh, the experiences of the men who read me. It's getting, it's getting harder. It used to be you go do a day approach talk to a girl for five minutes or so, and you can actually get her out on a long date a couple days after that. But it, but now this, you're, you're starting to need for her to invest in you in the day pickups too. It's basically getting harder everywhere. Like you need a girl to invest as much as you can. So when you're ready to go run game, if you're able to really have a, many hours that are free so you can uh, push these these interactions as far as you can go. Um, you know, unfortunately, I don't, girls just have so many options, so many options that this guy she met at a bar that she talked to for 10 minutes or the guy she met at Starbucks that she talked to for 10 minutes, it's not enough to break through all the attention that she is getting every day. So what do you do on dates once you have them? Once you got a, you've got her out, uh, I, I assume that there's, I don't know if there's a difference between an insta date with you or, or and a, mm -hmm. one where you've kind of called her up or uh, and coordinated something specific, but what, what, what's your typical date like? Usually I plan to meet a girl around eight o'clock. Uh, the expectation is that we're going to grab a drink at a bar. The first half an hour to one hour, I keep the conversation a little bit dull in the sense of we're just getting to know each other. I want her to genuinely feel like she knows a bit about me. I'm not, I'm no longer a random man that she met who, who she doesn't know her, his backstory and basic facts like brothers and sisters. And then after the first hour, um, if the bar, it, usually I pick a first bar that is not that intimate, where there's not a lot of opportunities where I can touch her beyond a tap on the forearm or the back of her hand. After the first 60 to 90 minutes, I tell her I know another bar close by, and we walk to a more a, a darker place where the seating now I can sit next to to her and really start to ramp up how much I, I touch her. At the same time, I'm not as concerned of keeping up a lively con conversation because an intimate moment is not going to be made from nonstop talking. You know, the she a girl will actually perceive an intimate connection if there's not a lot of talking. And one way I can know that this is coming is if I lock eyes with her without saying anything and see how long it takes her for her to get nervous and to look away. When, if you try this early on in the date, she may only lock eyes with you for two seconds or so, and then she looks away. But after the first hour into the second hour, she should be able to hold it for a long time. That's how I know, okay, we are now going from just getting to know each other to creating this intimate moment. My uh, hand is going to touch her for longer periods of, of time. And if you're using alcohol, most dates you're going to have a drink or two. It's going to feel 
natural. You know, it gets intimate. The silences are fine and so on. If you're not using alcohol, if you're in a country where girls don't drink much, you're going to have to uh, split your dates up. Instead of doing it all in one date, going for the goal in the first date, you do a date, a tea date on the first, and you cut it out after like an hour. And then you do a second date because you're going to, without alcohol, you have to distort time in a different way. But with alcohol, you can just bounce from one bar to the the next. But the main idea is just be normal at first and then ramp up the touching and the intimacy as the time goes on. Um, I guess I wanted to ask you a little bit more about how you would do that transition mm -hmm. from, uh, from, you know, I guess from, I guess uh, there's, there's interest, but uh, the transition to intimacy, I think is a, is a uh, challenge for a lot of guys and maybe you have some ideas or suggestions or, or advice for, for guys and how to get comfortable with that and, and how to advance things between them and a, and a girl, especially when they don't have a lot of experience with it. Mm. I let the venue help me out. So the first venue is going to be maybe a little bit uh, with the lighting will be stronger. The space between us will be, be larger. Again, you can have a normal chat, just getting to know each other. You can show some stories that show that, hey, you're not like an average guy. You do some interesting things. The second venue is going to be darker. It's going to act as a cue for her. Hey, look, this is a more intimate type of place. It's more natural for him to sit closer to me. When you're talking, when you're telling stories, I advise guys, okay, when you're telling a joke or you're making a point, give her a give her a touch on her arm, her forearm. And then as and when the intimacy is is increasing, those touches are longer. It used to be a second. Now it's three seconds. Um, so you're just gonna really extend it. But there's nothing, I mean, it's not, it's it's more of a natural thing where you're getting tired. You okay, I've been talking for one hour or so. I don't want to talk as much. We are having a couple of drinks. The more natural thing to do is to enjoy each other's company with less talking and to look at each other more and to touch more. So that that's how I see it as. And it usually starts when I venue change from the first venue to the second. On the walk from the first venue, I stick out my arm and I tell her, I don't want you to fall down. And then she hooks it. So there, again, that is the cue. Now we're getting into an intimate type of place. In some ways, you want her to know, okay, he is trying. He's trying to put the moves. It's okay for a girl to think that. She's not going to come out on a date with you if she doesn't expect that. I mean, it's okay to give a girl what she expects because in all likelihood, she wants you to try that. So I don't see it as... Uh, that you have to worry how she's going to respond. When you get them on a date, it's it's pretty expected. And unless you skip steps, unless you forego touching completely and then try to plan her a big kiss out of the blue, I'm not. You're not going to get into a lot of trouble with a girl being taken aback. Take her. Start at the first venue. Have conversation. That's pretty normal. And then gradually change that conversation into more of an intimate vibe with touching and silence and the occasional joke and the story. But you don't need to be constantly talking. Have any uh, suggestions about how to convert them when you're out on the date and you're sort of it, it's just you're just getting that vibe that it's not going the way you'd like it, but you're quite attracted to the girl. I mean, okay, if it's not going. Well, I mean, if she's saying no to your steps, if she doesn't want to be touched by you, if she's telling or she's telling you outright that she doesn't want you to touch her, if she's starting to look at her phone, if she is, if you're losing her, unfortunately, once you lose a girl, it's very hard to get it back. I don't think it's possible. 
I don't think once a girl has known you for an hour or two and she starts going away from you to turn that around, look, it's it'll be easier just to go find another girl. Once a girl makes a decision that she's not attracted to you, unless a really hot girl comes up to you in the middle of your date and says, hey, Roosh, oh, I'm so shocked to see you here. And then it turns out that she was your ex. You know, unless you can harness some kind of magical social proof, uh, you're not going to turn it around. I mean, the main goal is not to get it, it in a bad place where the girl is just losing interest. As the day goes on, she should be looking less at her phone and looking more at you. If it's going the opposite way, I mean, it may, I mean, it may even be best just to call it short and go out and try to meet another another girl. What sort of, uh, I guess, um, end result do you do you typically go for? Are you looking more for one-on-one -on -one relationship or dating multiple girls? Or what's your usual, um, uh, I guess, uh, uh, goal in a lot of ways in, in, in going out with the women uh, other than just having as much success as you can that particular night? When I was a younger man, the goal was to sleep with as many girls as I possibly could. And uh, unfortunately, you know, that that doesn't it's nice when you have a story that you can tell your your friends. Uh, it feeds your ego to make you feel like a man because you slept with so many, so many girls. But the amount of satisfaction I got was not was not high. Uh, dating multiple girls, I know a lot of guys like it to date three or four girls at the same time. That takes a lot of energy and it's just, it drains me. You know, I don't want to have to manage all these girls and one date after the next. So what I seek for now is to meet one girl that I like, that I'm strongly physically attracted to and date her for as long as it can it can go it turns out i'm more of a one woman kind of man i just want to meet one girl that i can have some emotional connection for that i like hanging out with that i don't need, just need to invite her to my apartment so we can go to bed someone that i can show to my favorite places to eat that we can see the occasional show or someone 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 that i can uh, have companionship with so in order for that i know that uh it's a little bit harder to get a girl that you're both physically and emotionally connected with so this is why like i said earlier a lot of my job is to screen girls out and now now though one thing i'll say if i believe i can get a fast physical score if i think this girl at the bar is not my ideal girl but she'll come home with me on this night then i will go for it i will try because i have calculated that okay i can probably get get her back home but normally i would view a girl as uh you know can she give me what i want and i only need w one i know i have uh i'm thankful that i have a lot of work that i care about doing that takes a lot of my energy and i only have so much left for a girl so i hope that she fits my standards in that way one thing I, i've sort of found is that uh, often you can connect with a girl and uh, it maybe defies uh, your understanding but for one reason or another it doesn't maintain and uh, i'm wondering if you have any uh, tips or ideas about keeping them around uh, sometimes you know that it's maybe the first i don't know a couple of weeks or something that uh, you know till you sort of get into this kind of a groove with the, with someone and but a lot of times it's that time that you lose them and um I, I just wondering if you had any ideas about how to keep them around in the beginning i think that uh it it is a problem the bigger the city that you live in the harder it is to keep them around i think that's why we have that modern word ghosting ghost it's a uh, i mean it happens a lot where you're seeing someone and they disappear they they don't even have the courtesy to say hey look uh, i don't want to see you anymore and so i think this is a common thing in the urban areas in cities where uh, girls you know want to 
experience as much as they can. Or I think this is also is happening when girls see men more as providing entertainment value than love. If a girl is looking for fun, for ent entertainment, no man but the best, but the sports athlete is going to satisfy her. So after a few weeks, she is going to ghost. If a girl is looking for love, then that's something else. Then she has identified you as a potential soulmate. I mean, there's not many girls that I think do that now, but in the cities that are huge, you definitely don't really find that. So there's nothing specific you can do. You can't, because when a girl comes to you, her brain is already filled with a belief system on how to treat a new man that she slept with. And you, you can't change the fact that she's already done that on a lot of guys. Generally speaking, a girl will stick with the man who she believes is the best that she can get. If you're just another guy, if she, if you're just a guy that's similar to ones that she has had, then why would she stay? Why, when she can go to a club, they, they, a similar uh, guy as you and not feel regret for passing on you. I mean, this is why a lot of my work also describes how broken dating is. You know, dating, unfortunately, is not working for either women or men. If you have, if you, if you had the failure rate that dating has and applied it to a cancer drug, they would say that cancer drug is toxic. But here we're still using dating. And unfortunately, as I talk about in my book, game is really a scavenger strategy now in this declining stage of the West where we're just trying to get the little bits of intimacy that we can get. But a lot of these girls that we're meeting, that we're talking to, their head is not in the right place where they can connect where they really want that where hey i want this one guy with the beautiful beard and i want to stay with him grow a home with him i want to comfort him and have children with him this is getting very hard this is why so many men are asking me Roosh, where I'm done sleeping around. I just want one girl that I can love and who loves me. Where can I go? That's what I think a lot of men who, once they are done with their early game stage of sleeping around, that's what they want. But I, it's hard. There is no easy, easy answer. So what you're asking is how do you get a girl to stay? Well, that would have to be how do you change her belief system on how to connect with a man who is good for her. And unfortunately, I don't know how to do that. Okay. Uh, I guess very big today is, is, uh, is the internet and online game and Facebook. And uh, Facebook just started a new uh, Facebook dating system, which is sort of similar to Tinder in a way. Any uh, comments on, on online game? One thing is a lot of girls are putting an extraordinary amount of attention on their phone. They're on their phones for several hours every day. Their attention is going on it. This is why during the day you're walking around, uh, you're not going to get a lot of eye contact, partly because their attention is on their their phone. It's because girls are starting to prefer this risk-free virtual type of world, virtual interactions than the real thing. And I know a lot of men who are very advanced in, say, Tinder, Instagram, using all sorts of tricks. Uh, but from what I can see, for every hour you spend face-to-face -face trying to approach girls during the day or night, you're going to get roughly the same result as if you put an hour online to messaging girls and trying to match with them and fixing your photos and so on. I find that, and in my experience too, in fact, I think I do better face-to-face. -face -face. It's about equal. The only guys who should be doing internet game are ones who are good looking, who are who probably don't need game in the first place. Because right now online, the main quality girls are selecting for are looks, the main one. Uh, so if you're something like a seven out of a 10 or lower, 
you're not going to get a lot of mileage online. I think your your better bet is to develop your social skills in the slow and difficult way of one approach at a time. Because a lot of these apps, uh, it can be good right now, guys doing well, but they change the algorithm. And in six m months, I hear guys say, I can't even get a match anymore. So they dedicated all that time to getting good on this app that just dies out. Now, I spent all my time on how to approach a girl face, face to face. And until that is be, uh, made a crime, which in the UK and Canada, maybe it, it, it uh, halfway is, I can go out right now. But if they change this, this app I'm using, then I'm kind of out of luck. So I don't advise guys to use online game. If they do, it should be a supplement. It should be something on the side when you have downtime at work or you're on the toilet bowl or something, but it should not be the main way that you meet girls. And if you do go the internet route, looks are the most important thing. How you appear is the most important thing. Now, a lot of guys are telling me the only way they can get matches on Tinder is if they hire a professional phot photographer to take amazing photos and to photo touch them. So in, in some ways, men have to become like girls so fixated on their look to get girls. And I hate to see where this is going because I just want to be a caveman, just go up to a girl and spit, spit a bit of game and you know get her agreeing to go out with me but as the world becomes more shallow and focused on looks as women are less able to genuinely connect with men things are just going to get harder but but that ability to be social to speak to uh, show that you are a unique interesting person face to face i think that's going to be an important skill that you can use for the rest of your days well, despite, um, I guess, your uh, uh, comments about online dating, maybe you can give us some texting tips that uh, you find are kind of uh, maybe interesting that someone could use. My texting game is the simplest type of game that you can use. I don't, I advise guys, do not try to entertain her. Do not try to put her on an emotional high with your jokes. All that does is delay the inevitable. All that does is, okay, you're, you're giving her jokes and she's replying with smileys and she seems intrigued. And then after you hit her with a couple of jokes or a couple of cocky statements, you say, hey, are you free tomorrow night? And then nothing. So really she was just using you. So I tell guys the first text I send uh, girls that I meet is, hey, Laura, it's Roosh. How are you? That's it. And then she will text back. And if she doesn't ask, and if she doesn't text back within four hours, it's done. <laughs> That's what I found. If she doesn't text back in four hours, I mean, in, except for a few exceptions, it's basically done. You can delete her number because she has her phone everywhere. She never goes three minutes without looking at her phone phone. So unfortunately, how many numbers do, do you have to get for a girl to write back and for a girl to agree to go on a date with you? So she says, oh, I'm doing fine. How are you? And say, oh, I just got back from the gym. I'm cooking dinner now. Are you free tomorrow at 8, at 8, 8 p.m.? I go straight for it because the girl, when she gives you her number, has already decided if she's going to go out with you or not. Your texting game, if you couldn't convince her face to face, you're definitely not going to convince her on, on the phone. So she already knows what she's going to do when you text her. This is why you, texting game is the easiest thing. You don't have to worry about it because she already knows what she's going to do. Uh, I think there's a lot of uh, theory that um, uh, sometimes men ruin their opportunities by opening their mouths. It's like, uh, you know, a lot of people say silence is often uh, very efficient. I think you you mentioned that earlier. Um, and I think it's it, it's sort of similar with the texting game. If you, you know, if you say too much, it's not good. And if you say too little, it's not very good. But um, there's kind of like a balance, I think, that you need to uh, find what's the right balance for, for the girl you're talking to. 
you know, some of them want to talk more, some of them want to talk less. Um, and uh, I guess the um, question is, uh, you know, how do you, do you do anything to sort of get to know them? If you, you really, if, let's say you got her number quickly, uh, what would you do to get to know them, uh, you know, sort of online or, or uh, on the phone or, or, you know, do you text them? Do you phone them? How do you, you know, get to know them if you, if you had a, a you know, before they, they can start ghosting you because you, you haven't, you don't really know them at all once you got, if you got their number in a very short process? I don't get the number of a girl unless face to face she has shown signs that she is interested in me. Because again, if you can't get her to uh, to think of going on a date with you, a three hour block of time in person, there's nothing you can do over text. I mean, it would take you hours and hours of texting just to even begin to simulate a 10 minute face to face conversation. So I don't. So even if the number I get is fast, I still go for the fast uh, date ask. I don't entertain her. Now, if you meet girls online only, if you meet girls on Tinder or, or Instagram. Yeah, you have to do that. You have to have some kind of con conversation where you talk about some of her photos, some of the hobbies that she's doing, let out a, let out a joke, things that you would do face to face. Uh, but if you meet girls face to face and then you have to depend on the phone to keep that attraction going, you're actually going, you're going backwards. I find that it doesn't help. Like it doesn't help if you meet, a, if you get a girl for a short interaction and then try to keep it going online. So only get numbers face to face of girls that you think are going to come through. Like a good sign that a girl won't come through is if you ask for her number and then she kind of hesitates and say, do you have Facebook? She's not going to come out on a date. You can say, have a good day and leave. You know, she already, I already know that she's not going to come out on a date. So it, you can use various tricks to get her number anyway, but it's not going to matter because she's not going to show up. Again, always think that the first date is going to be three hours. This is a commitment. What do I have? To, if she's saying no to little steps, like giving a number before a three hour date, uh, there's no way she's going to come out for a longer date. So I think a lot of guys, they waste time with prospects that are not strong. Like this girl doesn't care about him. You know, she, yeah, you, you met her for, and you talked to her for a while or you got her number from online, but you're just one of, one of uh, hundreds of men. She can get hotter. She can get better. Uh, your standards for her are too high. You know, I'm, I mean, I don't want to make it seem so bad but a lot of guys their expectations are way out there you have to learn to crawl before you can run uh so i think a lot of guys need to need to need to understand that if you talk to a girl for 10 minutes or so you're not you're not really in her world this is why like we talked about earlier when i meet a girl i try to take it as far as it can go if the first time i met her we talked for an hour okay now that is something good but this is why those short pickups, those sh especially now, getting a girl doing the, you know, I, I have to run, but I saw you from over there and you seem really nice. How about I get your number? That's not going to go anywhere, you know, unless, again, you're the best that she can reasonably get. Um, anything that um, comes to mind in terms of helping guys that, uh, you've learned over the years that maybe um, is different from, you know, what you were doing in the past. Like when you, if, let's say if you, if you met somebody and he's got, I'm sure that you, you run into uh, more or less a lot of the same kind of um, sticking points. And uh, is there any that come to mind that you treat differently today than, than you had done before? A common problem I, I see is that a lot of men think that a woman can fix them, that a woman can fix the internal problems, the mental, physical issues that they have. Uh, a lot of women, um, men think that a woman can complete them, that if they get this sex uh, that they want, everything will be solved, that life will be fine. 
But unfortunately, besides a short term happiness that a new lay can give you, unless you're pursuing deeper connections, there's nothing a woman can give you that you can get for yourself. And if you do meet a girl that you love and she loves you back, which is great, the happiness that she gives you will be balanced by now the commitment, the responsibility, the maybe arguments, the lack of f freedom that you have because you have a girlfriend. So there's a, there's a balance. And a lot of men think that they can cheat the universe and that if I get all these girls, I'm going to be happier. But if you're chasing the wrong girls or if your expectations are wrong, if you're full of anxiety and confidence issues, if you don't like how you look because you haven't put the time to work out to maybe improve yourself, girls aren't going to give you anything. And in fact, they're going to confirm the problems that you actually have. So this is why, you know, women are, I think some men think that women are a form of therapy, that she's going to help me. She's going to fix me. But women are as messed up as we are, if not more so, because at least we are logical in the way we approach life. Women are not. So to fix your problems, you're going to pursue a purely fickle, emotional creature every day. That's going to make things worse. So as long as you know what a woman can and can't give you, she can give you sex, she can give you love, intimacy, but that's going to balance out. You know, she's not going to solve your problem. She's not going to make them go away. She's not going to make your anxiety go away. She's not going to make you feel suddenly confident. You have to work on that yourself. That's an internal problem, you know, and if you think a girl is going to solve it, then you're going to be in for a bad ride. So that, 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 that I would say is the number one thing. Guys think that a woman can kind of complete them, but in especially the modern woman, I think less than ever, they're not going to be able to really solve your problems. And if anything, if you're going after the wrong girl, they're going to make more problems. Um, I was just thinking, do you have maybe one or two very practical tips that, um, you know, you might give a guy, you know, it's just sort of something specific that might be, uh, might help them in their, in their in their life uh, in terms of women and either in meeting them or in uh, keeping them around or, uh, you know, advancing their uh, intimacy with them, just something maybe that a little bit unique, something that, you know, uh, maybe they haven't heard before. You know, unfortunately, I don't have anything new, no magic tricks. The only two things I would say is for men to focus on working out, to lift weights two or three times every week. This is the most reliable way for a man to feel good about who he is, to feel confident that his body is improving. And this, I mean, this will definitely help to approach girls. It also gets your testosterone higher. A lot of men are eating bad diets and soy based diets. And when you work out for your masculinity, that is the best thing that you that you can do. And the second thing a man can do is to do is to commit to doing one approach each day. Just every day find a 1 hour block that you or longer that you can just do one. You don't have to do 10. If you do one approach every day and uh, you lift weights, those are the two biggest things any man can do. And you see, it's nothing ex ex extraordinary. It's nothing maybe men have not uh, heard of. But what I find is it's really the basics. It's the basic work of improving how you look and feel and putting yourself in front of girls, regardless of the game that you have, that is the two most important determinants in the success that a guy has. Now, of course, you're going to have to learn a lot more than just those two. But when I am in a new place, a new town, I'm starting from zero. I got no prospects, no leads. I, keep, I, I start to focus on my fitness and I do one approach every day, usually in the late afternoon. And that's it. Okay. Well, you know, if 
guys want to find out a little bit more about uh, what you have to uh, uh, teach them or what uh, to learn from your experience and things, what um, what are you uh, currently uh, doing? Are you coaching guys? You have the products out. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about what you're offering for people who want to follow up on on this interview. Sure. So they can find me on my website, roosh.v.com. That's R-O-O-S-H-V.com. I like to publish about one new article each week. A lot of the articles I share is the intersection of culture and game and politics. Because I started to ask myself, why do I have to use game on these on girls and why is it getting harder to connect? So that's where a lot of the writing I do now comes from. Also, there will be a link um, on my website to my YouTube. I do live streams every Sunday where I recap various cultural trends and game trends. And lastly, I just uh, wrote a book in September. It's called Game Here. And in this book, I recently, because my investment in game is going down, I'm starting to move on to other things. So I wanted one final book that accounts for the massive cultural changes we've had from the smartphone and so on. So I wrote a 400 page book on really teaching men everything I know. It includes uh, how to get started if you're a newbie step by step. It includes day game, night game, texting, calling. Also uh, it includes a re relationships chapter two. So if you find a girl, how to, how to keep her, how to maintain a relationship that stays in your favor where you're getting something out of it. And this book, uh, you go to my site, you can buy the paperback or you can buy the ebook or the audiobook. I narrated the audiobook. It is 13 hours. So uh, that's where they can get a lot of the ideas I talked uh, about with you. They can find there. Well, I wanted to uh, thank you very much for taking the time with me today. I think you've shared a lot of really critical information for guys to uh, to learn about, uh, you know, how to uh, have success. And uh, I see it's more focused at this point to, you know, having success with that right girl, which is, I think, what most guys are looking for today. And uh, I just really wanted to thank you for taking the time again. And hopefully uh, people will follow up and, you know, you'll be getting uh, some good response from this. Great. And thank you very much for uh, having me on. Whenever you want me to come back, that's fine. Sounds good. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.